Hey, this is the Fight Nerd, and joining me now is the Happy Warrior, Roxanne Wadaferi, who is getting ready to fight Hitomi Akano at Sengoku's Solo Fight Show on December 30th. Roxy, how are you today? I'm feeling great, thank you very much. All right now, as we mentioned, you're getting ready to fight the Girl Fight Monster. What a great nickname at Sengoku. Now, what are you doing to get ready for her? Uh, for the past month, I've been doing a lot of cardio, and I've been working my stand-up. It wasn't officially announced, but um, I was told for a while that um, I might be fighting, so better do some cardio. Now, you have a few new people training with you over at your gym, right? Uh, sort of. Um, I've been training regularly with Sean Fru for the past three months now. So we've been going to um, Miyata's gym, um, just doing personal training together in Kita Senju. So what are you guys working on specifically over there? Are you allowed to talk about it? Uh, I'm allowed, but I shan't. Oh, all right. All right, now your last fight was in Strike Force, which was a dramatic knockout slam from Sarah Kaufman. How are you feeling since then? Uh, I'm feeling ready for blood. Ha, ha, ha. No, I really want to <laughs> really get back in there and um, uh, prove that, you know, I can do it too. That was actually your first loss by knockout, so how do you mentally feel in regards to your recovery? Uh, I feel eager to turn the tables on my next opponent, whoever that might be. And um, I don't know, actually that fight, that knockout, wasn't as hard on me as it could have been. Um, it was kind of cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, I lost, but, um, you know, it kind of knocked the 135-pound champion belt from challengers onto the main show. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I was pleased with the result, anyway, for um, women's MMA. So despite losing, you're actually happy because it was a highlight reel moment and because it kind of helped push the the belt into the big scene more. Exactly. Now, with a lot of these Japanese New Year's MMA events, things seem to get booked at the last minute. Um, so you mentioned you kind of knew about this in November. So talk about, I guess, a little about the uh, the process of getting contacted for this fight and when it was officially booked and how you actually trained for a fight with so little time to get ready. Yeah, it kind of sucks. But in Japan, that's how they do it. They tell you, oh, we want you to fight in this promotion. And you're like, okay, who, when, what, where? And they're like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was, they, I was told either Jules or Sengoku. And then as Jules got to be like one week before Jules, I thought, well, it's probably not going to be Jules. Um, I just had to train generically. Like, I knew my weaknesses and my strengths. So I tried to focus on, you know, just what I needed to work on. And, uh, you know run stairs. I hate stairs, but it really gets my cardio up. So now that I know who my opponent is, um, you know, I can kind of focus more on what I think she's going to do. Now, were you offered several different fights or, or did they just kind of say you're going to get Akano and that's it? Um, there were talks about various other people. So it was kind of, actually it was pretty stressful for me because I didn't know who or what or when. Um, but that's the fight game. So you just got to keep yourself prepared and focus on yourself. Now, Hitomi Akano's last appearance was also in America at Strike Force Challengers 10 tournament, where she earned a win over Karina Dom and then a loss to Maisha Tate. Now, did you learn anything about her from watching those two fights, or have you seen those two fights yet? Uh, I've seen them, and um, I have to re-examine them today, actually, before training. Yeah, I think it'll it's good studying for me, but I can't say specifically. <laughs> uh, so you can't tell us any weaknesses or any strategy yet? Nah. All I right. I think so, sorry. Oh, that sucks. All right. Well, in the meantime, we've been hearing all sorts of news in America about what's happening over in Japan with K1 and Dream. And, of course, you are a foreigner living in a foreign land in Japan. So can you kind of represent the Japanese public for us and tell us what they think and the mainstream media thinks about the news about those two companies and their financial troubles? Yeah, ever since the ever since MMA kind of lost its TV deal with Pride and Fuji Telebi, Telebi um, uh, a while ago, the MMA is kind of not quite mainstream anymore so it lost the casual viewers like the fights are still really good you know um and the hardcore fans can appreciate that but the general public isn't so into it anymore so um you know it's the promotions are kind of in financial trouble now you know they're still paying the high fight purses to the fighters but there's not you know the income coming in from the gate so it's trouble but um um i'm just going to quote my manager who said this publicly that Sengoku never was late with the payment. Um, so, you know, they have the sponsorship Don Quixote. Uh, so they're doing okay, I guess. Um, they're not going to fold. Alester Overeem won the 1K1, right? And yep. he was, recently he's been on a lot of TV shows and news programs and uh, just walking down the street, I think my friend Tony filmed him and everyone was like whipping out their cameras like, oh, it's it's Overeem, it's Overeem. And that was pretty cool. Like, that's what 
um, uh, you know, Japan needs is to see these stars and be exposed to them to kind of renew the public interest. So everyone's pretty much crossing their fingers that, you know, this year's dynamite and this year's end of the year uh, fights will you know, really kind of help, you know, push, expand MMA a little bit in Japan. All right, hopefully. Now, um, is Japan, a lot of us uh, in the MMA world kind of think that Japanese fans are, are crazy about MMA. Now, is Japanese as into MMA as many American fans believe it, or is it really, you know, not that big as we think it is? I think it used to be bigger. Um, people who used to watch it just because it was on TV just would change the channel now. Like like I said, it lost casual viewers. Um, now, I spoke to Tara La Rosa recently after her win at Damage, and we did a little interview, and she mentioned that she wants to even the score with you and make your two fights into a trilogy. And I know you want that fight to happen as well, but you want it under certain terms, right? Yes. I want it in some big show. You know, I think that's an amazing fight, and we we always put on a good show, and it's going to be really exciting. And, um, you know, I want a lot of people to see it. I want it to be not some local show. No offense, local shows are great, but, you know, I want it to be televised. Um, I want it to be a big deal, you know? So, um, it's, and, you know, that's what I'd like. So I just want to wait for the right offer to to fight Tara again. Did you happen to actually see her fight against uh, her opponent recently at Damage? I did, yes. What did you think of Tara's performance? Yeah, I thought uh, Tara had a good performance, and um, Hashi also had a good performance, so um, it was a really good fight at Damage. Okay, yeah, thanks for reminding me about her last name. I forgot what uh, her opponent's name was for a second there. Thank you for that. My pleasure. <laughs> all right, now, Roxy, She's if you'd my like... former teammate, after all. <laughs> there you go. All right, now, if you'd like, go ahead and uh, thank your sponsors or anybody else you'd like. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank... Uh... My sponsors, Fight Chicks, uh, Tussle, Nogi, uh, also uh, my manager, Shu Hirata, and all the people who support me, especially Sean Fru, who's been spending a lot of time with me, um, training me. All right. I'm sure got... I forgot somebody. That's what happens. <laughs> I should keep a list. <laughs> all right, well, you guys can check out Roxanne Wadafari on December 30th at Sengoku Soul of Fight from Tokyo. And for those of us who aren't lucky enough to live in Japan, hopefully HDNet's going to air this. And if not, I'm sure we'll figure out something to watch this thanks to the internet. (laughs) Roxy, good luck and Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Happy New Year.